Um, I started out as an undergraduate student studying criminal justice. Um, I'm one of the few people that kind of knew what they wanted to do right from the start. So I never struggled with the decision as far as what profession I wanted to enter. I was always interested in the crime shows and movies and books and magazines, anything that had to do with crime fascinated me. So that was the natural path that I decided to pursue. Um, after receiving my bachelor's degree, I ended up getting a position in uh, corrections in the prison system. It was not my first choice. Um, in fact, I was looking at becoming a state trooper. That was where I was leaning. But I was hired uh, about a month before I officially graduated college. And um, it was a nice pay. I didn't have to work weekends or holidays. And I thought, well, OK, this seems pretty good. And um, so I started in corrections. I started as a correctional officer. And then I moved up through the ranks, moving into treatment and rehabilitation as a drug and alcohol counselor, swinging back into the security end of it. By um, I was overseeing the criminal records and intake division of the prison where basically new prisoners enter. It's probably the most volatile area of the prison because you're getting people that um, don't want to be in prison and they're not happy about the situation. And so long story short, I was there uh, roughly 16 years. I decided that I wanted to try something different. I was getting a little uh, antsy and I became executive director of a drug and alcohol facility. And from there, I went back to my home state of New Jersey and became executive director of a crime prevention agency. So combined with my teaching, I've been teaching now 18 years. It's a total of three decades that I've been in this field. So. I'm very comfortable with any questions you might have. I can answer everything and anything you possibly can and I'll answer honestly. Um, I, I would do it all over again. I would probably make some different choices along the way, but as far as the same uh, profession over and over again, it's been really good to me. Um, I started teaching full time in 2010 and really love it. And that led to becoming a presenter, a trainer, an author, an editor. So it's really taken off for me. So honestly, I couldn't have imagined how far this has progressed. And then along the way, I went back for my master's and went back for my doctorate degree. So here I am today, 30 years later, sitting at this uh, office right now. Well, we thank you for your time. Um, is it okay if we jump right into the questions? Of course, absolutely. Okay. And uh, I have some uh, students that email me questions and uh, the students here, if you guys have any questions, again, feel free to just message them in the chat and, and I'll unmute you. Um, but one of the first questions uh, is they're asking, um, what things do you recommend that kids study if they wanna go into um, criminal justice career? Oh, psychology, sociology, most definitely. It's funny when I was younger and I had to take those courses as part of my undergraduate curriculum, I didn't understand the relevance of them, but I can assure you those are important courses. Particularly psychology is understanding the criminal mind, understanding how people become who they are. But on the same uh, level, you have sociology, which kind of explains a lot more as far as upbringing and and seeing the environments that a lot of these individuals grew up in. And you could kind of see that the path was pretty much paved for them in the direction that they were going to go. Most people succumb to those pressures more than succeed. You know, we would learn a lot more from people who've been in those very terrific, you know, environments with abusive parents, alcoholics, addicts, whatever the case may be, and they survived and they did well. But unfortunately, a, a good percentage will unfortunately succumb to that road there. So, so sociology, most definitely. Psychology is my favorite. I love that. Um, I've always been intrigued by why people do what they do. So those are two good courses to have. Um, another one is for psychology for yourself, believe it or not, and focusing on how you can kind of process a lot of the things that you would see, that you would witness firsthand, or that you hear about you have to realize that you're, you're kind of being exposed to the worst of humankind and the worst acts imaginable. So you have to learn how to process it to avoid burnout. So it's not just the psychology of the offender, but it's also psychology of self-reflection, self-regulation. 
So one of the students wanted to know, is there any disadvantages or advantages to getting an online degree in criminal justice? Because I know that you dabble quite a bit in um, teaching online. So yeah. I, that would be a great question for you. That's why I picked this one. Sure, absolutely. Um, I'm a full-time professor with American Military University. And I actually pursued my doctorate online with Capella University. Interestingly though, there was a huge stigma with online but it's interesting now with COVID and us being forced into this online environment, now a lot of the traditional universities that were kind of a little bit more conservative in their approach are now all of a sudden looking at us, hey, this is actually working and we can actually attract more students in this capacity. So the stigma is no longer there. It's not gonna matter. As long as the university, whether you're in the US or abroad, is accredited by an accreditation um, agency, you're golden. It doesn't matter if it's online or if it's face-to-face -face on campus. As long as you have the credentials, or rather the university has the credentials, nope. It worked out well for me pursuing it online. It's a little bit more difficult because you have to have more self-discipline, but no, that's, that's actually why I got into online teaching. It's it's definitely a different way of teaching, but it opens up more doors. Um, one of the students wanted to know, and you can spare any details, but just more about the, the experience. Have you ever had to help with any FBI investigations or, or work with the FBI in any capacity? Yes, actually, um, even just recently, as far as um, teaching and presenting, I presented at the International Human Trafficking Conference with the FBI. And I've just um, put in a proposal to present at the F FBI's National Academy for their uh, conference next year in the hopes that we still have the conference. But yeah, I've worked with the FBI on a number of cases. I've been very fortunate to work with a lot of the federal agencies as well as the state agencies. Um, after 9-11 in the United States, you know, you started to see the federal government, state governments, and local governments coming together a little bit more often and working with each other. So it unfortunately took a massive tragedy like that to make us learn that we need to coordinate and work together to fight a lot of these problems because crime today is global. There's nothing about it. I mean, human trafficking, drug trafficking, gun trafficking, cyber crimes in particular, it's all global. Therefore, you have to have that cooperation of not just the feds, but also your international authorities as well. So yes, absolutely. Um, in fact, when I worked in corrections, there were several serial killers over that time that were incarcerated. Uh, one that comes to mind is Charles Cullen. He's the United States um, number one serial killer. He was um, identified as the nurse killer. So he's believed to have killed over 100 patients. So that gives you an idea of some of the uh, fine people that I've met along the way. It sounds terrible. But like you said, you know, taking those psychology classes, I'm sure helped you as, as yes. far as uh, being able to do your job. Um, we have a question from Kamal Preet. Uh, Kamal Preet and Kamal Preet, I believe you're in Italy. Uh, go ahead and ask your question. Um, I want to ask you that uh, here there are some students that do dual diploma. And uh, in this project, criminology is an alternative subject. Which advice uh, will you give to us uh, to choose this subject? Okay, so she was basically asking um, what subjects, again, would you recommend in high school that they kind of, uh, like a science, biology, math, um, what kind of stuff, stuff would you recommend? I would probably say the sciences, most definitely, but more of the social sciences, um, more so than the physical sciences, most definitely. One thing is an another thing I should mention that we often forget is that um, your writing skills. This is essential in this career. This is one thing they don't show you in the movies and the TV shows is all the writing that's involved in this profession. So it's a very writing intensive type of profession. So if you can write well, articulate your thoughts in writing, definitely. Another course that most people, most students shy away from is um, speech class. Um, that's one that a lot of people don't wanna take or they wait to the very end and they're forced to take it for their curriculum requirements, but speech is so important because you're not only dealing with the offenders, you're dealing with professionals, you're gonna be in the courtroom, 
you're going to be testifying in cases. You have to learn how to articulate your thoughts. You have to learn how to control your emotions, you know, and, and control your nerves. Okay. Everybody gets a little nervous. I've been doing this 30 years and I still get the jitters when I'm on stage. That's natural, but I kind of embrace it. So being able to take a speech class as well as some type of writing class, definitely. And it's not writing in the sense of like, um, like an English comprehend or comprehension type of class, but more so in just being able to identify the facts. Critical thinking is another one. Being able to think on your feet and write down the events of what occurred in a very short but concise fashion. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, the writing skills are definitely, from what I've heard, <laughs> I don't have experience <laughs> with criminal justice, but from what I've heard. Um, so we have a pretty interesting question. Um, did you, in your opinion, before and after 9-11, because some of these students met 9-11 uh, survivors, did anything change as far as the approach to criminal justice? Absolutely. You know, this is, I can't really, we'll call it anecdotal evidence, but you know, that we had signs that this was going to occur. There was intelligence stating that this could be a possibility. So if anything, out of 9-11 and then the commission that followed afterwards, we learned that we need to, we need to work as a nation, okay? We usually turn to the federal government, the FBI, DEA, CIA, all those three letter acronyms but we have to rely also on the state and local officials. So now they form task forces. That's a big thing that's come out of the 9-11 um, commission is task forces because your local police officer is more likely to encounter a drug operation, a terrorist cell, um, some type of human trafficking operation more so than the FBI. The FBI relies heavily on intelligence, uh, which is shared information, but you're, officers are more likely to encounter something like this happenstance right on it or just simply they got you know stumble upon it i mean if you look at a lot of the crimes that have been solved it's been by local officials more so than federal officials so learning to work together and to try to put um i guess you could say their pride aside as far as those turf issues when i first entered in 1989 it was very territorial Corrections didn't cooperate a lot with law enforcement. Law enforcement didn't cooperate a lot with the court system, but we're all working for the same goal. It's common sense, but unfortunately we were very fragmented. So we learned quite a bit since that time, and that is to cooperate. I use the three C's, cooperate, collaborate, and communicate. So those are the things that we have to continue doing in order to resolve these problems. You know, this is not also, this is not just a, a criminal justice problem. This is a society problem. This is a world problem. So we have to not only share intelligence within our own nation, but also abroad to all the other countries and vice versa. That is uh, sound advice, especially nowadays. Um, so let's all work together on everything. So uh, I will, um, I w I'm gonna tie in my last question with, uh, we have a question from one of our students um, and she wanted to know, I'll just read her question. Next year, I will start university. And unlike uh, you, I cannot choose between mechanical engineering and criminology. Is there any advice you could give to someone who has this type of problem? So I wanted to tie that with my final question. What advice would you give to these students as they kind of uh, go off into this world and, and kind of figure out what they want to do? Because it's, you know, you're one of the leading experts in your field and, and um, you know, we enjoy having you. What, what kind of advice would you give to them as, if they're looking into something like this? Honestly, I would talk to someone who's in the profession, talk to somebody like myself. You guys have the ability to reach out to anyone internationally on LinkedIn, especially to reach out to those professionals and talk to them about their careers. That's something I didn't have. So I kind of like, I guess you could say, fumbled along the way to try to find myself in this profession. And I learned a lot. But as um, as young folks like you are, you can kind of talk to people and get their honest opinions, the good and bad about these you know, types of professions. Um, having a mentor is something else that I highly recommend. I wish I had a mentor when I was younger. Um, someone who you look up to and you admire in this profession and reach out to them and let them guide you. I'm going to be 54 next week and I still have a mentor, you know, it's just something you don't outgrow. It's something important, but someone to kind of, 
you know, lead you in the right direction. And sometimes just, you know, make sure you want to do this. But one piece of advice I would say is that criminal justice, one of the problems we've always had with students is they call it like the CSI effect is that you start to think what criminal justice is based on what you see on TV and in the movies. And you got to realize TV and the movies, it's, it's glamorized, it's sensationalized, you know, it's to get your attention and keep you motivated and wanting to see more. But there's a lot more that goes into that, unfortunately. And so knowing what you're getting into is so important so that you can kind of deal with these situations as they come about. So as far as mechanical engineering and criminology, these are, those are two extremes there, that's for sure. Um, that's a, once again, there, there's criminal justice probably wouldn't pay as much as a mechanical engineer and you would probably have a little bit more leverage in that capacity. But I'm a big advocate for you got to do what you love to do because you're going to be working 30, 40 years of your life. So you have to enjoy it. Um, for me personally, mechanical engineering just wouldn't be something that would appeal to me, even if it offered a salary twice mine. I would do this all over again. Well, that, that's interesting that you mentioned that because one of the students just messaged, uh, they wanted to know, like, what sparked your interest when you were growing up to want to go into a criminal justice career? Fascinated by people. What, how do seemingly, okay, seemingly normal people, how do they cross that line? What makes a normal person, in a sense, cross over and become deviant or delinquent or criminal? What, what happened? And usually you can find there's an origin to that, meaning that somewhere along their lifeline, something happened, whether it was in their own household, whether it was among peers. We know when you're teenagers, you're a little bit more impressionable. And that's when we start to see people that could go in one different direction. But I think I've always known and always was intrigued by crime, you know, and wondering what makes people, makes them cross that line. You know, someone who, let's say, grew up the same as me, identical backgrounds, what makes one go into this direction and the other one go into crime or addiction? It's always fascinated me. And I can tell you one thing, I'm still learning. I'm constantly learning about it. It's ever changing. I think we keep continuing to learn more and more about the criminal mind and the power of um, your environment, your social environment, where you're brought up, the people you hang around. It's amazing how much influence they have on you, good and bad. <laughs> so I've always been fascinated. It's, I can, as far as I can remember, Ralph, to be honest with you, as long as I can remember, I've never wanted to do anything different. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that because there's, um, we've had people in the past that, you know, have backgrounds in criminal justice or even are reformed criminals and they all say, you are who you hang out with. Mm -hmm. So they, that's, you know, I don't know if you would concur with that. Um, we have, okay, I promise, one more final question. This oh, is Deletta. Uh, she had an interesting question. I'm unmuting you. Go ahead and ask. I wanted to ask you, was your first work different um, of your imagination or was it the same? My first, like, impression of when I started? Yeah. Did, did when you first started did it meet the impression of like what you were assuming it would be like no. when you started working in corrections no <laughs> it was it was it was completely different it was a little bit more eye-opening in the experience um yeah one good thing i think that's good for people like myself you know is that well let me do it this way some people become very cynical and jaded after a period of time in this profession and that's a shame and i try to teach on how to avoid that but i've looked at it more differently in learning how people more empathy empathy and compassion as to how someone ends up in this situation with the exception of someone like a serial killer and mass murder, most crimes you can kind of figure out like, well, you know, it's a bad childhood, there was abuse. There's a lot of um, pathways to criminality. So I think it was more an eye-opening experience that I kind of felt bad for them that they almost, everybody has a choice. We always say that you have a choice in life, of course, a choice in everything. But sometimes I think when you're younger, it's a forced choice in a sense, it depends on your upbringing. So that can be pretty powerful. And I think just learning about people and realizing that not everybody, in fact, no one <laughs> chooses really to get involved in crime with the exception of like, you know, drug trafficking and things like that. But most people are pushed into it for some reason. So it just opened my eyes a little bit more, which is good and bad, a little bit shocking, but you learn to adapt. 
Well, we want to thank you for your time today. And um, before we let you go, I'm going to go ahead and unmute everybody so we can all thank you. And then I'll end the meeting for all. And uh, so before we let Dr. Pratar go, can we all say thank you? Thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 you. Bye. 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 Bye.